Hi there, this is Mrs. Reed. Today we are going to be going through uh, converting between percents, decimals, and fractions, and then also comparing them. Uh, so let's start with converting. So the first ones here say to change the following fractions to decimals. So as we know, when we are converting between fractions to decimals, our fraction bar means that we are dividing. So since we are allowed to use calculators here, make sure you guys have your calculator and that you are following along with me. So when we change a fraction to a decimal, all that we are doing is we are taking numerator divided by denominator. So in my calculator, I'll take 3 divided by 8. And then I'm just going to write my decimal, which is that 0.375. Okay, so next one, again, when you're changing fractions to decimals, you're just taking numerator divided by denominator. So if we were to take 3 divided by 25, we get 0.12. Next one, 5 divided by 50 is 0.1. And then you guys try the last one. So go ahead and plug 7 divided by 42 in your calculator and see what kind of answer do you get. And as you guys are doing that, notice how I didn't put zeros before my decimal point, even though my calculator says that there were zeros there. Um, just know you are more than welcome to do so, but you don't have to. Because, for example, number one, this 0.375 is the same thing as 0 0.375. So instead of writing the zero every time, I just cancel out that zero and then I just write the decimal. But just know that you are still able to write that zero if you would like. All right, so let's see how you guys did on number four. So if you guys took seven divided by 42, you guys should have gotten 0.16 repeating. And yes, you do need to put that repeating bar um, if they don't tell you to round, okay? All right, so that's pretty easy. So converting from fractions to decimals, you just divide and then write down that decimal. Now let's go the opposite way. So now let's go from decimals to fractions. So when you are converting uh, decimals to fractions, um, you need to look at the decimal and look at the place value that it's in. And you're only looking at the numbers behind the decimal point. So if you guys remember for our decimals, our first position is our tenths place. Our second position is the hundredths. And then the third position is the thousandths. Okay, and that's how far we will go in math seven. So just remember these three. So after a decimal point, so if I have zero point something, we have the tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. So when we are converting between decimals to fractions, I'm looking at the decimal point and I'm looking at my very last number to see what place value that number is in. So here, my four, if it's the one, two, third position, remember our third position is the thousandths place. So if I want to write this as a fraction, I am going to write that whole number that I see here behind the decimal point. So that 164 is gonna be my numerator. And then my denominator is going to be what place value that was in. So since the four here was in the thousandths place, my fraction is going to be out of 1,000, okay? So 0.164 as a fraction is 164 over 1,000. But in math seven, we do need to simplify. So um, if you guys have a calculator like mine, it's going to simplify my fraction for me. Um, if you guys don't have a calculator like mine, just think, okay, what number can go into both 164 and 1,000? Well, 2 does, so you can divide them by 2, and then you would have to divide it by 2 one more time to get this answer. Okay, so please remember, um, you always need to simplify if you can. Okay, so that is that answer. 
Okay, so for number six, uh, we need to be careful if there is a whole number. So I will tell you guys what to do with that whole number here in a second. But again, you're always looking after the decimal point first to create your fraction. So here, my only number here is eight. So what position is the eight in? Well, one number after the decimal point is the tenths place. So my eight is in the tenths place. So this fraction will be eight out of 10. Then, if you have a whole number out front, your whole number is just going to go out front of your fraction and it will create a mixed number, okay? So the point eight was in the tenths place, so that's why I wrote eight out of 10. And then the one was a whole number, so I just wrote my whole number out front of my fraction and now we just have a mixed number. Now again, go back and ask yourself, can I simplify this? Notice how I can because 2 goes into both 8 and 10. So if I were to simplify this by dividing by 2 in my numerator and my denominator, we will get 1 and uh, 4 fifths. And that would be my answer. All right, let's try number seven. So again, when you're changing decimals to fractions, you need to look at the last position in the decimal point in the decimal spot and look to see what place value is that number in. So notice how the four is the second uh, number after the decimal point. So looking up here, that would be the tenths hundredths position. So again, when you're writing this as a fraction, you are writing the whole number after the decimal point, all of those numbers after the decimal point out of whatever place value your last number is in. So again, since the four was in the hundreds place, my fraction is going to be 84 out of 100. And notice how I did not have a whole number, so I don't have to put anything out front of my fraction. Now, go back and say to yourself, can I simplify this? Well, yes I can because these are even numbers. So if you have even numbers, you know that two is going to go into them. So you can divide by two, divide by two, and then keep simplifying until you can't anymore. Or if you have a calculator like mine, it's going to simplify it for you. So in this case, 84 out of 100 is going to simplify to 21 over 25. All right, so go ahead and pause the video for me and try out number eight on your own and then press play when you are ready for the answer. All right, so you guys should be done with number eight, so let's see how you did. So you guys should have looked at the five to see what place value the five was in. And since it's two numbers after the decimal point, that would be the hundredths place. Um, so you're only writing the number that is after the decimal point into a fraction. So you guys should have wrote the 95, uh, 95 out of 100. And then notice how you had a whole number. So remember, if you have a whole number, you're just going to drop that down to make your fraction a mixed number. Then you guys should have simplified. So notice how my last numbers are five and zero. So I know that five is going to go into both five and zero. Um, so what you guys should have simplified your fraction to is 4 and 19 twentieths. And that is it. So good job if you guys got that. All right, moving on. Um, next thing that we are going to talk about is changing the following decimals to percents. So when you change a decimal to a percent, you are moving your decimal point two times to the right, okay? So when you're moving your decimal point two times to the right, another way to think about this, since you guys do have calculators, is this is the same thing as just multiplying your decimal times 100. Okay, so either way works for me. Just make sure that you understand how to do either one. So one way is to move your decimal point two times to the right. 
or the second way that you can do this is just multiply all your decimal points times 100 because that's the same thing as moving it two times to the right. So I'll show you guys both ways so that you guys can see how to do it, okay? So number nine. Uh, let's say I move, so I'm changing decimals to percent, so I know I have to move my decimal point two times to the right. So I'm going to take my decimal point here and move it one, two times. Now, notice how there's an empty spot. So if you guys see an empty spot, what number should we fill in there? We should fill in a zero. So this decimal, 1.5 as a percent, is 150%. Now, if I did this the second way, so again, another way instead of moving your decimal point is to just take your decimal times 100 and notice how I got the 150 again. So either way works for me. Whichever way you would rather do, please do it that way, okay? All right, next one. So again, to move a decimal to a percent, we're moving this decimal point two times to the right and this now becomes 008, but those zeros don't mean anything out in front. So this 10 now just becomes an 8%. Oh, sorry, this 0 0.08 now just becomes an 8%, okay? And again, I can always double check it with my calculator by taking that 0 0.08 times 100, and notice how I did get eight again. All right, so you guys go ahead and pause the video and try 11 and 12. Should not take you guys very long. So when you guys are ready, go ahead and press play to see if you guys got the correct answers. All right, so you guys should be done with 11 and 12. So let's see how you did. So if you did it the first method, you should have moved your decimal point two times to the right. You did have an empty space here, so you should have filled that in with a zero. So 5.6 as a percent is 560%. And again, if you guys use your calculator, you're just taking that decimal times 100 and notice how we got 560 again. And then same thing here, move that decimal point two times to the right and this now becomes 29%. So good job. Our second page. All right, so now we are working backwards here. So instead of changing decimals to percents, we are now changing percents to decimals. So instead of moving our decimal point two times to the right, we are now going to move it two times to the left. So when you're changing percents to decimals, one way to do this is to move decimal point two times to the left or the second way is instead of multiplying your decimal points by a hundred you can divide them by a hundred and it will move it two times to the left as well okay so one way to do this is to move your decimal points two times to the left or you can divide it by 100 and it will give you your decimal point, okay? So I'll show you guys both ways here. So our first one is 4.43. So if we're changing a percent to a decimal, we are moving it two times to the left here. And notice how I am going to have that empty space. So remember, whenever there's an empty space, you're gonna add in that zero. So 4.43% as a decimal is 0 0.0443. And notice how I wrote down every single number here and I did not round, okay? Um, so if I were to plug this into my calculator, so again, instead of multiplying by 100, we can divide it by 100. And notice how I'm going to get the same thing by 0 0.0443, okay? Um, so let's look at the next one here. So again, I can move my decimal point two times to the left, and as soon as I see an empty space, I can fill it in with that zero. So 0.104% as a decimal is 0 0.00104. And again, I can use my calculator, divide it by 100. So take that original number divided by 100, and my calculator not showing me this, but let's see if I can clear that real fast. All 
and it's still doing it. So this times 10 to the negative 3 just means I moved it back three times to get this answer. So sometimes if your guys' calculator does that, you are going to have to use this first method to figure out your decimal point, okay? All right, next one, 36.2%. Again, move it two times to the left to make it into a decimal. And this now becomes 0.362. This now becomes 0.362 because I moved it two times to the left. And again, I'm writing down all the numbers. And then my last one here, 0.454%. Again, just move it two times to the left. Here I have an empty space, so I'm going to fill it in with a zero. So this now becomes 0 0.00454 as a decimal. All right, moving on to the next part. So change the following percents to fractions. So usually, so these are a little bit more difficult to work with. Um, but if I were to give you like a whole number as 9%, we know that percents are always out of what? Well, percents are always out of 100, right? So one way to do it is if you have a whole number, so here I have a whole number 9, to change it into a fraction, I'm just going to put that number out of 100 because a 9% is the same thing as 9 out of 100. And then you would just see if you can simplify that, and in this case I can't, so I would just leave it as 9 out of 100. Okay, so these are the type of problems that you guys will see um, on your guys' test. You guys won't see ones that are like this. Um, I can show you guys how to do these ones into fractions. Um, but I might change some of these to just make you guys practice what you guys will see on your test, okay? Um, so especially with the decimal percents, I would first change these into decimals. So just like we did up top, I would first move this two times to the left. And I would change this 0.2% into a 0.002%, or sorry, a 0 0.002 because we're changing it into decimal form. And then from here is when I would change it to a fraction because remember on the front side, we just look at the number at the end, see what place value it's in. So this is in the thousandths place. So my fraction would just be two out of 1,000 here. And then when I reduce it, it would be one out of 500, okay? But again, you guys won't see problems like this on your test, so how about I just go ahead and change these. So I want you guys to change them as well on your paper, because I want you guys to practice what you guys will see on your guys' test, okay? Um, so let's change this to 89%, 4%, and let's do 2.5%. Okay? All right, so again, like I was talking about up here, when you guys are changing percents to fractions, just think, percents are always out of what? Well, percents are always out of 100. So I am just going to put my percent out of 100 and then see if I can simplify that. So looking at my 89 out of 100, there's nothing that goes into both of these, so that would just be my answer. Okay, moving on to the next one. So again, 4%. So percents are always out of 100. So if I want to change it into a fraction, I would just put 4 out of 100. And I can reduce this because these are even numbers. So I know that 2 is going to go into both of them. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. And 100 divided by 2 is 50. And then notice how these are still um, even numbers. So I will divide them both by 2 again. And then our answer here will be 1 out of 25. And I should have just known that from the beginning because 4 quarters equals that uh, $1. So I know that it would have reduced to 1 over 25. Okay, now for this one, 2.5% out of 100, usually we do not write our fractions with the decimal in it. Um, so what the way that I would do it for number 20 is kind of similar to what I did over here with uh, number 17, is I would first move your decimal point two times to the left, 
to make it into decimal format. So 2.5% as a decimal would be 0 0.025. And then from here, I would change it into a fraction. So again, you're looking at your last number, seeing what place value that's in. So the five is in the thousandths place here. So I'm writing the whole number uh, after the decimal point into a fraction. So this would be 25 out of 1,000. And then this will reduce. So I'm gonna use my calculator here. So 25 out of 1,000 would reduce to one over 40. All right, and as always, you guys can pause the video, but I'm going to go ahead and move on to this last part here. Um, so this says to change the following fractions to percents. So a couple different ways to do this, but I think I'm gonna show you guys the easiest way that I think it is to do this. And to change a fraction to a percent, the easiest way for me is to first change fractions to decimals and then change decimals to percents, okay? So remember, uh, to change a fraction to a decimal, all that we are doing is dividing, and you guys have your calculator, so we can just take numerator divided by denominator, and notice how I get 0.8. Then, to change your decimal to a percent, remember we are moving this decimal point two times to the right, or we can just multiply it times 100. So after I divide, there's my decimal, then I'm going to multiply this times 100, and my percent would be 80%. All right, and again, if you move it two times to the right, there's that empty space, and that's also how we got the 80%. Okay, so 5 over 16. Again, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to a decimal by dividing 5 divided by 16. So I get 0.3125. And then I'm going to change this decimal to a percent by moving my decimal point two times to the right or using my calculator and multiplying it times 100. Either way, we are going to end up with 31.25%. And notice, guys, that since we are changing to percents, I am writing my percent sign after every single number. So you guys need to make sure that you're writing your percent signs as well. Okay. All right, so you guys pause the video, go ahead and try 23 and 24, and then press play when you guys are ready for the answers. All right, so let's see how you guys did. Uh, so for number 23, first thing I would have done was taken one divided by eight, and that would have given you guys 0.125. And then to change it to a decimal, move it two times to the right or multiply it times 100. And you guys should have gotten 12.5%. And then when you guys took one divided by four, you guys should have gotten 0.25. And then to change it to a percent, you move it two times to the right or multiply it times 100. And you guys should have gotten 25%. All right, so that is how you guys convert between fractions, decimals, and percents. So make sure you guys know how to do all of them. Um, but now we are going to go ahead and move on to ordering fractions, decimals, and percents and comparing, okay? So the easiest way to do this is to get everything into one, um, so like all fractions or all decimals or all, all percents. Everything needs to be in the same format. That's the word I was looking for. So keep same format. So I'll leave it up to you guys. Okay, if you think it's easier to change everything to decimals, then change everything to decimals. If you think it's easier to change everything to percents, then change everything to percents, okay? To me, I think it's easier to change everything to decimals. Okay, so for this video, I am changing everything to decimals, and then from there is when I'm going to start ordering, because it's hard to order these when they're not all in the same format, so that's why I'm telling you guys to get everything into the same format first before you start ordering your numbers, okay? So 
Uh, let's start changing everything to decimals. So remember to change a fraction to a decimal. We are just dividing. Numerator divided by denominator. So 16 divided by 100 is 0.16. Uh, notice how 0.27 is already a decimal, so I'm going to leave it a decimal. 53%, uh, remember how to change it to a decimal. You can locate that there is a decimal point at the very end of each whole number, and I'm going to move it two times to the left. So 53% as a decimal is 0.53, or the other way to do it was to take your calculator and just divide that percent by 100. And notice how I got 0.53 again. And then our last fraction, again, to change it to a decimal, I'm just dividing. So that would become 0.2. So now that everything is in the same format, I'm now going to order them from least to greatest. So a way to do this is to line all of these numbers up. And then you just look at them by their tenths place, and then you look at them by their hundredths place, and then you just keep going to figure out which one's the smallest, okay? So looking at our tenths place, we have a 1, a 2, a 5, and a 2. So which one's the smallest number? The 1 is. So this 0.16 is our smallest number. So that is going to be my first number. And really, I should convert it back to what it originally was. So I'm going to put it as 16 over 100. So that one's gone. So now still looking at the tens place, we have a two, a five, and a two. So which one's smaller? Our twos are, okay? So then since the twos are the same, we're now going to move to the hundreds place. So here we have a seven and nothing. So remember if there's nothing, I can put a zero here. So out of seven and zero, which one's smaller? Zero. So my next smallest number is going to be the point two, which was one fifth. So that one's gone. And then looking at our last two decimals here, notice how this 0.27 is going to be the next smallest. And then the last number, which is our biggest number, was that 53%. So this is how we order them from least to greatest. Moving on to number two. So same thing. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change everything to decimals. So first one, 99 divided by 100 is 0.99. My 0 0.30 is already a decimal, so I'm going to leave it as 0 0.30. 68% uh, to change this into a decimal, I can take 68 divided by 100 or I can locate the decimal point, which would be at the very end, because any whole number has a imaginary decimal point at the end. And then I can move it two times to the left, and this would become 0.68 as a decimal. And then the last one, 9 tenths, if I were to take 9 divided by 10, that gives me 0.9. Alright, so now that I have everything into decimal format, I can go ahead and list them in order from least to greatest. If you can tell right away what they are from least to greatest without putting them in this format, that's okay. You can go ahead and do that. Or if we do need help, we can list all of our numbers going up and down. And then just looking at the positions. So our tenths place. The smallest number here is this 0.3 because the 3 is smaller than the 9, 6, and 9. So the 0.3 is my smallest number here. Next one, I have a 6 compared to 9. So this 0.68 would be the next smallest number. So that was represented by 68%. And then between 0.99 and 0.9, so notice how our nines in the tenths place are the same. So that's when I move to the hundredths place. And I have a nine and nothing. So remember this nothing I can change to a zero. So this zero is smaller than nine. So this 0.9 is going to be the next smallest number, which we said was nine tenths, which means our largest number is this 99 out of 100.
All right, so I'm going to do one more and then I want you guys to try the bottom three on your own. Uh, so for number three, uh, nine over 100 decimal form is dividing it. So that would be 0 0.09. 0.2 is already in decimal format. 67% uh, as a decimal. Move this decimal point two times to the left or just take that 67 divided by 100 and that would be 0.67. And then four fifths as a decimal, four divided by five would give me 0.8. Okay, so after you change everything into decimal format, we can now list them in order from least to greatest. So looking at my tenths place, I have a zero, two, six, and eight. So my zero is my smallest number. So that means nine out of 100 is my least number. Next, I have a two, six, and eight, so my two would be the next smallest number, so that was represented by 0 0.02, or 0 0.2. Uh, next one, looking at my tenths place, I have a six and an eight, so the six is smaller, so the 0.67 was represented by 67%. And then my last one here was the 0.8, which was represented by four fifths. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and I want you guys to try the bottom uh, three on your own and then press play when you guys are ready for your answer. All right, so number one, first thing you guys should have done was change everything into decimal format. So this was already a decimal. 15% uh, as a decimal should have been 0.15. Two as a decimal, um, since this is just a whole number, remember there is an imaginary decimal point at the end. So this is actually the same thing as like $2. So think of this as $2. So here's a decimal point. And then one half as a decimal is 0.5. So when you guys list these in order, you had 0 0.3, 0 0.15, 2.00, and 0.5. Now notice how all of our other decimals did not have whole numbers. So you do need to look at the whole number position. So since this two was the only one in the whole number spot, that means that this number is the largest number. Okay, $2 is more than 30 cents, 15 cents, and 50 cents, okay? Um, so uh, my first smallest number here, I see here is a one in the tenths place. So it would be the 0.15, which was represented by 15%. Next one would be the 0.3. And then that leaves the one half and then the two. So that should have been the order that you guys went in for number one. Uh, moving on to number two, three fourths as a decimal was 0.75, three dollars. 0.4 was already a decimal point, and then five percent as a decimal should have been 0.05. Okay, so when you guys listed these in order, it should have went five percent, the 0.4, three fourths, and then the three. And again, if you guys needed to write them up and down, you're more than welcome to, okay? So that's how I got all my numbers in order there. Again, three was the only whole number, so you know that that would be the largest. And then you just look at your place values. And then the last one here, 4% um, as a decimal was 0.04. And then one fifth as a decimal was 0.2. So listing these in order, it should have gone 4% first, the 0.14, the one fifth, and then the 0.48. And that is it for today's lesson. So if you guys have any questions, please uh, let me or your teacher know. And that is it. Thank you.